Another way to interpret this is to look at an impulse response. And in the impulse response, I will also sort of get your attention here. Suppose that I have as an impulse, there's zeros, and then there's a one. And then I shift that through, and everything else is zeros. I mean, what is an impulse, right? An impulse is nothing, then something, then down. So these are all zeros. Here's a one, here's a zero. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm pushing this impulse through my encoder. And I only, you know, the zeros don't have to go to infinity because once I get full of zeros, I'm just getting zeros. So um, what happens when I calculate? What is the impulse response for this particular configuration of encoder? And again, what is the configuration of the encoder? It's these interconnections that determine what the code is. These two functions determine the code. That's why a vector representation tells you what the code is. So if I change these interconnections, if I make more of them, then I will change what the code is. But right now, these interconnections determine the code. So with these interconnections, I can find what is the impulse response of this encoder. And to find the impulse response, I just shift through a 1 into these encoders. So we already did that on the previous slides. So I just sort of pulled over those outputs and I got 1, 1 in this configuration where it was at state 0 and then I shifted in a 1. When I had state 1, 0 and shifted in a 0, then I got an output 1, 0. And when the state was 0, 1 and I shifted in a 0, I got 1, 1. So I could say that the impulse response of my uh, encoder is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Impulse response, great. Does, does it mean what we think we mean with an impulse response? I mean, when we say we have an impulse response, we say that the output is just equal to the input convolution with the impulse response. Here's our impulse response. So now this is another way that we could think of generating the output of our encoder. Okay, so how do I do an, a convolution in the digital domain? How does that work? Well, let's just calculate it. Uh, how do we calculate an impulse response in the digital domain? You know, it's h of n minus k, x of k, k equal, and, uh, you know, across all of k, and the length of the um, uh, uh, impulse response. So, we, this is just a summary of what we just saw in the previous slide. You know, this is another way of writing this, saying that when the input was 1, 0, 0, this was the output. Uh, now what I want to say is, how can I take this input, 1, 0, 1, which is what we encoded earlier. Suppose that the, I have this input, this impulse response is the information I have. This output sequence <laughs> is the impulse response. If that's the information I have, how can I figure out the output based on this convolution representation when this is my x of k, 1, 0, 1? So I take the impulse response and I multiply it by 1. So then I get 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Then I take the next one, 0, times the impulse response, and I'm shifting it because I'm doing this summation over k. Now I'm over here, but of course when I multiply I get 0. Then I get 1, and now I'm multiplying it and I've shifted over my k equal 3 now. And so I have 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And I do the summation modulo 0 of uh, these, this summation here. So I get 1, 1, 1 and 0 gives me 1, 0 and 0 gives me 1, 1 and 1 gives me a 0, 1 and 1 gives me a 0, 0, 1 gives me 1, 0, 0, and then 1, 1. And of course we see that this is exactly the same as the output sequence we got when we took the ASIC approach of just calculating uh, the summations of those shift registers. So we see that impulse response is another entirely valid representation of this encoder, which is in, in essence a linear system. So this is our encoder. So for our encoder, suppose we want to represent it as a polynomial multiplication. We saw here we could represent it as a convolution with the impulse response. Now I'm going to have another mathematical representation. And in this case, I'm going to use my vectors. My vectors, if you recall, this one was, oh, 
there it is already, <laughs> 1, 1, 1 was my vector, and 1, 0, 1 was my vector. So now I'm going to take these vectors, and I'm going to assume that they are coefficients in a polynomial. So the 1, 1, 1 becomes 1 times x to the 0, so just 1, plus 1 times x, plus 1 times x squared. The next one is going to be 1, but there's no x. There's just the next one, which is x squared. So basically, when there's a 1, then one of the uh, powers of x would be present. When there's a 0, that power of x will not be present. So this is how I represent the encoder. Next, I'm going to do the same interpretation for my data. My data sequence was 1, 0, 1. So in terms of a polynomial representation, that data would be represented as a polynomial 1 plus x squared. Okay, so now I have a polynomial. And I can say that the output of encoder 1 is the multiplication of these two polynomials. So I take this polynomial, 1 plus x squared, times the polynomial of the first encoding function. So I have 1 plus x plus x squared. And I just do the math. And I get there's a 1 term. Well, first of all, the 1 times this whole thing. I get a 1 plus x plus uh, x squared. Now I do an x squared. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll write it out just for the first one. So I get 1 plus x plus x squared is the first term for multiplying this 1 times that. And then I get an x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, right? Now, x squared plus x squared, the coefficient would be 1 plus 1, which gives a 0. So that disappears. So that what I have left is 1 plus x plus x cubed plus x to the fourth. So I do the same mathematical manipulation for the second code word, and I get that the, the um, polynomial output in this case is 1 plus x to the fourth. So I write this <coughs> again as a, bino uh, excuse me, a binary vector of coefficients. So that 0 that I didn't bother writing here, well, I put it back here as a placeholder. So it's 0 times x squared. Here I had 1 plus x to the fourth. But I'm putting 0 placeholders for all of the elements, all of the powers of x, which were uh, zeroed out. So now I represent it like this. Now I can write them as vectors, right? So in the first instance, I have the coefficient of 1. The first code word is 1. The second code word is one, uh, code bit is 1. Uh, the first one is 1, the second one is 0. For x squared, both of the coefficients are 0. For x cubed, the first one is 1, and the second bit of the code word is 0. And for x to the fourth, 1, 1. So these were the pairs that I took from each one of the coefficients. The first element in the pair is the first bit of the code word. The second bit in the pair is the second bit of the code word. And then I can write the code word like this, one, u1 followed by u2. And of course, if we compare, this gives us the same output sequence. So we can see that we can use polynomial math, uh, multiplication also as a way of outputting from the encoder. And again, I won't talk any more about these. However, this is the way that mathematicians would attack the problem of determining what good codes are. So they would use this representation, look for properties, uh, which will lead to a good code. So when we see good codes, um, they're the result of a mathematical attacks, some analytical, some uh, numerical, to try and find good performance codes.